Federal NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is facing criticism today from 68 former NDP politicians. They're questioning Singh's decision to keep MP Aaron Weir out of caucus. Weir was booted from the party in May amid harassment allegations. In a letter, the former politicians say the leader's handling of this case was, quote, flawed from the beginning. We're going to speak to the author of that letter momentarily, but first, Hannah Thibodeau is here to walk us through what happened. Hey, Hannah, thanks hey. for being with us. Thanks for having What's me. What's the latest? Okay, so the latest, as you mentioned, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh has decided that Saskatchewan MP Aaron Weir is not going to be permitted to run in the next election under the NDP banner. So let me take you back a bit for the reason why. Last May, there was an independent investigation that found that there were four, there were claims of harassment and sexual harassment against Weir and that they were founded. Then Singh expelled Weir from caucus. What happened after that is the report was never made public, so we don't really know the exact details of that report. However, the Saskatchewan MP, Aaron Weir, did come out. He spoke to you on the show, and what he said at the time is that the harassment claims about him were essentially about not picking up on social cues. So listen to what he told Vashi back in May. And Delane... I, I certainly apologize to anyone who I made uh, uncomfortable by um, sitting or standing too close to them or by speaking with them uh, longer than they wished uh, to speak with me. So he's kind of making it sound like it was sort of social awkwardness in these complaints. But let me remind viewers again, we don't know exactly what was mm -hmm. in that report. So he went to a counselor, sort of, or a trainer, and in, after the, that came out, and he wanted to make amends for what he, he did there. And this week, Singh penned a letter to Weir saying, no, I don't feel you have done enough. Uh, he's not satisfied that uh, Weir understood exactly what had happened and his repercussions for this and he essentially said you're not allowed back in caucus and you're also not allowed to run under the NDP banner in Saskatchewan. And that's really what what led to this letter. That's that what we're, led to we're it. We're going to talk about. Yep. And and originally what got him kicked out of caucus though it was the it was the, the, al allegations. the allegations of that so again uh, let me just let you know what Singh had to say mm -hmm. in the letter as well we have a graphic for that uh, he says I'm not satisfied that you have taken the actions necessary to rectify the harm you have caused and the damage you have done to our, our work of building a safer workplace and party there's no further explanation from Singh on this we tried to contact Singh to see if he would respond he wasn't available uh, but also uh, as you mentioned, you're going to speak with an NDP stalwart uh, from Saskatchewan, Pat Atkinson, and we had a chance to talk to her as well. And she is saying that this is heartless, that they're not allowing him back in. He has been a part of the NDP since he was 13 mm -hmm. in Saskatchewan. And, of course, the NDP caucus is meeting next week, so this is going to come up for discussion. However, in talking to uh, party insider Kathleen Monk, we all know her on the show here, the decision has been made. And and she said Singh will not go back on that decision. All right. Thanks so much, Quite Hannah. Welcome. appreciate it. As Hannah mentioned, 68 former NDP politicians are calling it a mistake for Jagmeet Singh not to allow Aaron Weir back into caucus. And they've sent a letter to the NDP leader and caucus outlining their concerns. Joining me now is the author of the letter, Pat Atkinson. She was a Saskatchewan NDP MLA from 1986 to 2011. Hi, Ms. Atkinson. Great to have you on the show. Nice to be here. So I wanted to start off by asking you how this letter uh, that you and, and many of your colleagues wrote came about, and, and did Aaron Weir have anything to do with it? Did he ask you to write it? Absolutely not. Aaron Weir did not know about the letter. Uh, it came about because when uh, I heard on a Thursday that uh, Aaron had been uh, taken out of caucus, um, I thought I was going to pen a letter. I ended up sending it to a very large group of colleagues, asked them if they wanted to sign it, and they agreed. So on uh, May the 7th, we sent a letter uh, to the leader uh, show, indicating that we thought that the process that he had used was absolutely flawed and that uh, Aaron Weir needed to be reinstated. Aaron Weir knew nothing about the later letter until much later. Uh, you you talk about the process, I guess, and uh, and specifically in the letter, it suggests that that Mr. Singh should have waited for a formal complaint to investigate. But during the time, for example, of the Me Too movement and really the kind of increased awareness 
-hmm. of these issues. Would it not sort of have been seen as ignoring the problem if Mr. Singh did nothing when he was made aware of at least there being some sort of problem? Well, I mean, either you have uh, due process and procedures or you don't. Either you follow the constitution of the party, uh, the policy of the party, the policy of the House of Commons and the collective agreement uh, with uh, party staff uh, members or you don't. In this case, um, I think uh, whatever happened to Mr. Singh got the best of him and he did not follow due process. And that's what we were most offended about. And we were also uh, concerned about how Aaron's behavior was being described. Um, our understanding of sexual harassment is inappropriate touching, uh, inappropriate comments, uh, lewd remarks, sexual innuendo, and so on. Um, this particular investigator uh, referred to Aaron being too close uh, invading a person's or personal space and not having social cues to exit and not be involved in conversations. Well, as someone who has done a lot of uh, working the room, you insert yourself into conversations. As someone who is very tall, which I am, uh, when you're six foot four, as Aaron is, with a big voice, uh, sometimes you lean in. Um, we think that this whole thing got blown up uh, beyond proportions. But but while I, I, I understand what you're saying and I understand that the perception from outside c could be that, is there some, I guess, give for perhaps the, you know, the people involved in it did think it was too much or, you know, and, and that's why the investigator concluded what, right. what he or she did? Well, of course, um, you know, the one uh, uh, particular complainant uh, was uh, you know, very uh, concerned about a uh, political argument that uh, Erin Weir and she had, uh, and she, that was found to be harassment. Erin uh, Weir has attempted to apologize to her. Um, I, that hasn't, uh, for whatever reason, that has not happened. He'd like to. He knows that uh, his temper got the best of him. But, you know, all of us do uh, things that get the best of us, and we should be given an opportunity to apologize and move on. Um, politics is a passionate uh, endeavor, and we have passionate debates. We get mad at each other. Of the 67 former MPs and MLAs that signed the letter, I mean, many of us have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. We've had arguments with our staff. Uh, we've had arguments with our uh, deputy ministers. We've had arguments with our leaders. I mean, it's a passionate business. Um, and sometimes you need to apologize because your, your emotions get the best of you. Uh, Mr. Weir has tried to do that to not only the complainant, but also uh, the former leader, Tom Mulcair, and he has apologized to Charlie Angus. Mr. Singh, when he, he basically, uh, Mr. Weir wanted to be reinstated and, and mm -hmm. able to run under the NDP banner, and right. Mr. Singh wrote a letter saying, you know, basically no way, yep. and, and detailed his reasons. One of the reasons he, he stated was that the president of the union representing right. the NDP caucus members told Singh's chief of staff that the union has serious concerns about ensuring a safe workplace should Mr. Weir be reinstated. Right. What is Mr. Singh supposed to do, ignore those concerns? Well, I, I mean, let me just say this. Um, that we understand that the president of uh, the local uh, works uh, in Mr. Singh's office. Uh, it's unfortunate that the letter didn't come many days earlier. It came, it appears on the day that Mr. Singh was sending the letter to Mr. Weir. Of course, um, we need to be mindful of uh, how people feel, but let's just get back to what he was accused of. Speaking too close, being too close to people, uh, engaging in conversations that he sh needed to move on from, and he had a fight with the political staffer. Um, you know, I but think Mr. But Mr. Weir, but Mr. Weir has worked with a trainer. Uh, Mr. Weir has tried to make amends. Mr. Weir ha and the trainer indicates that Mr. Weir now gets it, uh, and that Mr. Weir uh, is, you know, trying to be a better person. And I think people should be given a second chance. And in this case, the leader doesn't think 
a second chance should be given to Mr. Weir. And all of my colleagues, my, for, our, my former colleagues, disagree with Mr. Singh on this matter. Do you know of any support among the federal caucus for what you're saying? Because there are no MP, current MPs on that list. Well, you know, one of the things that I know about being in a caucus is that you never uh, criticize the leader. And I think we learned that recently with uh, you know, Charlie Angus was critical of the le leader over the Chris Doverson case. I mean, you don't come out and criticize the leader. You have your discussions inside caucus. We are hoping that next week, because this letter, uh, a letter has been sent to every member of parliament, NDP member of parliament, and we're hoping next week at least they will have a discussion about the Aaron Weir uh, situation and how he's been treated. I mean, we've got 67 former politicians in the province of Saskatchewan, NDP politicians, asking the leader to reconsider. The leader should listen to people who know something about politics and something about due process. Have you spoken to Mr. Weir since, since the letter? Yes, I have. And what, what was that, if you can reveal, what was that conversation like? Well, I mean, obviously, Mr. Weir is very, uh, I won't use the word devastated, uh, but feels very badly about this. Mr. Weir is a fourth generation CCF NDP young person. I've known Mr. Weir since he was in grade nine. I was the Minister of Education and he was in the uh, provincial debates. Mr. Weir has been involved in politics since he was 13 years old, over 20 years. Um, he wanted to be a member of parliament. He was, he is a brilliant person. I think he's done a good job in, in Parliament. We like to think that uh, he represents us very well in terms of his intellect and advocating on behalf of Saskatchewan. And so this is, you know, a game changer for Mr. Weir. And we think that the leader needed to give him a second chance. This is, the leader is a former cr uh, criminal defense lawyer. He knows that people make mistakes and they need to, that they are able to redeem themselves and they need to be given a second chance. And he's not giving that second chance to Aaron Weir and we think he should. Okay, I'm out of time, I have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Ms. <laughs> Thank Atkinson. you. appreciate it. Thanks for calling us. We invited NDP leader Jagmeet Singh to join us to address Aaron Weir's status. Mr. Singh declined our request, but joining us now by Skype from Gabriola Island in BC is NDP MP and critic for women's equality, Sheila Malcolmson. Hi, Ms. Malcolmson. Nice to see you again. And you too. So I know that you've seen this letter. These 68 former NDP politicians essentially say that the whole investigation shouldn't have started without a formal complaint, that essentially the process was flawed. What's your response to that? You know, it's a it's powerful when a lot of uh, New Democrats come together the way that these letter writers have. But I'm afraid that they're missing what to me is the central piece in this whole story, which is Aaron's unfortunate uh, media release May 1st, where he um, said some outrageous things about our caucus members and about the complainants. Um, he did not take responsibility for uh, his actions and that's um, where we sit. Uh, you know, Jagmeet Singh initially, when we when he received the investigator's report, uh, offered Aaron a way to stay inside caucus, said, you know, as long as you are willing to take responsibility, as long as you're willing to do training, then I will consider bringing you back into caucus. And just a week later, Aaron blew that up by issuing a media release that called the harassment allegations trumped up. If there's anything we've learned about the Me Too movement is you do not say that allegations are, are trumped up, especially when you're trying to get yourself back into a progressive feminist caucus. To be fair, and also though, in that letter, he attributed this crazy conspiracy theory to Tom Mulcair and Charlie Angus. I mean, that's also a judgment problem. You don't throw your own caucus colleagues under the bus in public. And of all the people to pick a fight with in caucus, those are the two feistiest members. You know, so so that was the basis on which Aaron was removed from caucus. It was completely because of his own actions after the investigator had found. Yes, there was harassment, but it could be mitigated. And Aaron was the one that sunk that. Okay, sunk, sunk those chances. Let me just parse that out a bit because 
the um, first of all, he on Mr. Angus and Mr. Mulcair, he says that he has in the letter that he wrote to Mr. Singh asking to be reinstated, he says he has contacted them. He had a conversation with Mr. Angus. Mr. Mulcair declined to talk. He also says that the reason that he issued that release is because he wanted to address the specific allegations around uh, the fight that he had with a political staffer because he felt like his name was being uh, sort of dragged through the mud. And he went to Mr. Singh's office for guidance and didn't receive it. And so then when everything came out, he responded to it. Yeah, well, um, if he was getting advice from the NDP women in Saskatchewan, I'm sure they would agree that he should not have called the allegations trumped up and that then his conversation since, I mean, he did meet with uh, Jagmeet uh, following um, when after Parliament had ended this year um, and they talked about what Aaron would have had to do in order to rebuild confidence and trust in caucus, um, all of us. You know, not just Charlie and Tom, but anybody who would want to know that for sure this would never happen again, and that and that Aaron understood the damage that he'd done both to us as a as you know as individual caucus members, but also the reputation of the party. To say to call allegations trumped up is something that should never have happened, and he didn't take those opportunities to um, to make us believe those of us who that he spoke with that. That it would never happen again, and that and that he would completely disavow the things he said in that letter. So, so this is, um, I mean, all of us, all political parties, uh, we're all feeling our way about how to how to address sexual harassment in the workplace, uh, and uh, and. But you know, I just have to say again. I mean, there was a path forward for Aaron that would have kept him in the caucus, and he's the one that blew that up. And then Jagmeet gave him a path that he could have followed this summer, which he didn't follow. And so here we are. We've got a responsibility to protect people in the workplace. We've got a responsibility to try to learn how to navigate harassment allegations. Um, and I'm really glad that uh, Jagmeet has has stuck with his original. Well, actually, with his second decision, uh, and and it's our responsibility as uh, as social democrats, as feminists, and as. Uh, employers to keep a safe workplace, and that's what Jagmeet's done. I'm just not clear, I guess, how Mr. Weir didn't follow the path. I mean, he he has apologized. He says in this letter to Mr. Singh um, in August, more generally, I recognize the recent public conflicts within the federal NDP caucus have been harmful to our party. I'm sorry to have become one of the participants in such conflict. I have learned and will continue to learn from the experience. He also points to and, and presents a, a, a report from the trainer saying that he, quote, gets it. So I'm just, could you be explicit, I guess, about what what part of the path he hasn't followed? Well, the, the, the bar that was set for him was to rebuild trust within caucus. A lot of us had conversations with Aaron this summer. Um, I think a lot of us tried to give him good advice on, um, on what we would have, what I anyway would have liked to have seen. Um, and I've never seen him um, step away. I mean, when I talked with him directly about his uh, trumped up allegations allegation, you know, he said, you know, I, I can see that that might be viewed as maybe um, dismissive, perhaps. I mean, it was, um, you know, you know, he's on the record. This is not a media person sticking a microphone in front of his mouth and him getting stuck in the um, lobby of uh, the center block. This is him, in his own words, sending out a media release uh, that is the thing that, that got him removed from caucus and was... Um, certainly undermining of our belief that if uh, people come forward with harassment complaints that we have a responsibility to hear them and and try to mitigate and and that's uh, sadly not where we are right now the trust has not been rebuilt um, on my part anyway between uh, between me and mr weir and and the the seeds of that are are in the words that he wrote and he's not he has not retracted do, do you understand, I guess, though, from, from the point of view of those 68 former NDP politicians, how on the face of it, I mean, maybe is there something that, that you or Mr. Singh knows that, that, the, that they don't? Because on the face of it, it looks like he has tried to make amends. His worst, you know, it, it, the worst thing he did was not say, I'm sorry for something, say, accusing something of being trumped up. And he was, ex I mean, expelled from caucus. That's a pretty serious consequence. Um, is there something that your party knows, that you know, that Mr. Singh knows, that the rest of us don't? 
No, but I would encourage anybody who hasn't seen uh, Aaron in his own words, uh, the media release that he sent out, and I'm not sure that the members do. The, the letter that I received last night from the um, from the group in Saskatchewan didn't make any reference to even in the timeline, the fact that at one point Jeff Mead had said, um, under this path, Aaron, you can return to caucus. And then a week later, Aaron blew it up by issuing an inflammatory media release um, written in his own words. There's no reference to that in the letter. Uh, there's no reference to it in the timeline that the um, Aaron supporters sent. And I and I have a feeling that maybe they haven't seen that. Um, that's all on the public record. And it's on that basis that, and, and based on the conversations that I had with Aaron uh, this summer and with other caucus members that um, I don't know, um, yeah, from the conversations I've had, I, I don't see support and evidence of him having rebuilt the trust and us being confident that that would not happen again. Okay, I have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time, Ms. Malcolmson. Appreciate it. It's an unfortunate story, and thank you for covering it. Thank you.